So our next speaker will be Anandita Mukherjee. Thank you. Uh, so today um, I will talk about uh, a novel selective autophagy pathway that we have identified in Drosophila in vivo while using it as, a, as our uh, model genetic system. So to begin with, autophagy is a major proteolytic system that uh, maintains the cellular homeostasis by degrading damaged, dysfunctional, altered components uh, or proteins or organelles inside lysosomes, and simultaneously, it also uh, recycles this trash to provide essential amino acids to the cells at the time of stress. So we can say that autophagy performs various essential cellular functions, such as prevention uh, against aging, uh, adaptation to stress, uh, energy balance, and then defense against pathogens, etc. So among the three uh, major autophagy pathways in mammals, macroautophagy uh, requires the formation of a double membrane bound vesicle called autophagosomes. which fuses with the lysosomes to form autophagolysosomes. Uh, in contrast to macroautophagy, both CMA, or chaperone-mediated autophagy, and EMI, or endosomal microautophagy, micro uh, require uh, so specific soluble substrates containing a KFERQ motif. And it also requires um, HSC70 as their chaperones. But the major difference between CMA and EMI is that during CMA, LAMP2A, the lysosome-associated membrane protein receptor, serves as the critical factor, whereas in EMI, the S-card complex components uh, are absolutely required because it helps in the creation of the multivesicular bodies. Uh, but despite of, its, uh, of the importance of this uh, CMA and EMI pathways in uh, proteostasis and stress resistance, very little known uh, is uh, about both of these pathways because both of these pathways have so far been reported only in mammals and not in any non-mammalian uh, genetically tractable model system. That's why the main aim of our project was to uh, find out whether a macroautophagy alternative selective autophagy pathway exists in Drosophila, and if it does, then characterizing that pathway. For our study, we have used Drosophila fat body as our model system because it is functionally similar to the mammalian liver. Now for our study, we also have used a specific photoactivatable biosensor. The biosensor um, helped us to track down this pathway in a pulse chase manner. The biosensor uh, stays in a off condition in dark stage in the ground state, and upon photoactivation by blue light, it starts emitting red light. So uh, this biosensor was originally developed by our neighbor, Ana Maria Cuervo's lab, and they used this biosensor to track down and characterize CMA in mammalian cells. So for our study, we developed a transgenic fly larvae expressing this biosensor, particularly in the fat body cells of Drosophila. And um, we treated the larvae uh, for nutrient deprivation or stress. We used starvation condition provided by only 20% sucrose solution and as controlled used fed condition. And the initial results show that after four hours of starvation, which is the peak time of macroautophagy, we see that the biosensor stays in a completely diffused pattern uh, in response to the starvation in the cytoplasm, and it stays also in the diffused condition in the larvae kept in co fed condition for four hours. But to our utter excitement, we found that by, uh, uh, larvae, uh, when subjected to a prolonged starvation, at least 22 to 25 hours of starvation, it forms uh, distinct biosensor puncta in the cytoplasm, whereas larvae kept in the fate condition uh, shows the biosensor distribution pattern uh, in a diffuse state. 
When we quantified the biosensor, it showed that it degrades steadily over time, and the peak, degra peak degradation time being late or 25 hour of starvation, uh, indicating the autophagic pathway, uh, nature of this pathway. We also made some mutant uh, fly larvae exp expressing a mutant biosensor containing a KFE-AA motif or lacking the KFE-RQ motif totally. And in both cases, we find that in absence of a functional KFE-RQ motif, the biosensor couldn't form distinct puncta, and it stays in a diffused condition in the cytoplasm, indicating that a functional KFE-RQ motif is required for this pathway. So for further characterization, we uh, performed a detailed co-localization study, and we, saw, we, showed, uh, we found that the biosensor forms um, the biosensor puncta co-localized very highly with the um, endolysosomal marker GFP human LAMP1, and it also co-localizes significantly with the multivesicular body marker VPS4. So now, um, in order to find out whether this pathway is genetically distinct from macroautophagy, apart from our immunohistochemical result, we selected three essential genes of macroautophagy. These are ATG7, ATG5, and ATG12. And we used two dif uh, different types of genetic approaches. First of all, in the first panel, you see that we use a functional KF, uh, sorry, functional um, RNAi knockdown line of ATG7. And when we subjected the larvae to 25 hours of starvation, we see that in absence uh, or knockdown condition of ATG7, the biosensor still can form puncta, indicating that ATG7 is dispensable for this pathway. To confirm our results, in the second panel, you see, uh, we made a mosaic clone containing, uh, mosaic tissue containing homozygous clones of um, ATG7 mutation. And the mutant clones are marked by the absence of GFP-tagged nuclei, and it is surrounded by wild-type tissue containing GFP-tagged nuclei. And we see that after prolonged starvation, the biosensor forms puncta equally inside in the mutant clones as well as in the surrounding wild-type tissue, confirming that ADG7 is dispensable for this puncta formation. When we uh, experimented with the RNAi knockdown lines of ATG5 and ATG12, we, it also confirmed this result that all these macroautophagy essential genes are indispensable, sorry, dispensable for this puncture formation. Next, we tested uh, whether HSC70, the chaperones, are required for this pathway. For that, we used two independent non-overlapping RNAi knockdown lines of HEC74 shown in the first two panels. And the third panel shows uh, we made a mosaic uh, tissue containing homozygous mutant clones of HSC74. And all our results confirmed that HSC, the uh, biosensor cannot form puncta in absence of HSC74, indicating that HSC74 is relevant for this pathway. So now that we know that this pathway requires a functional KFERQ motif and HSC74 as chaperones, we wanted to know whether it is CMA or EMI. For that reason, we focused on the escort complex components again. To remind you that escort complex has, are important for EMI pathway because it helps in the creation of the multivesicular bodies, which helps in engulfment of the soluble substrates um, and it, uh, for, for, the fusion, uh, for its fusion uh, with late endosomes, for the degradation, or later on uh, complete fu uh, fusion with lysosomes for its complete degradation. So uh, in order to test whether the escort complex components uh, are required for this pathway, we selected one essential genes, each one from escort one, escort two, and escort three complex components. And here uh, I show you the results from uh, two of the uh, lines, two of the genes. Um, so the first panel shows v uh, uh, 
a mosaic tissue containing a VPS28, Escort 1 essential gene, mute, homozygous mutant clone, and it is surrounded by wild type tissue, just like I told, explained you before. And the second panel shows a, a mosaic uh, tissue containing homozygous mutant clone of VPS25, or uh, Escort 2 essential gene. And from all the results are from escort one, two, and three complex components. We get the same results. We see that um, in absence of these essential escort genes, the biosensor cannot form puncta after prolonged starvation, indicating that escort complex components are involved in this pathway. To confirm our results, we perform. Uh, sorry, um, we also quantified. Uh, the, this uh, biosensor signal inside the mutant clone, and we found that the mutant clone shows a stabilized signal of the biosensor indicating that it cannot be degraded in absence of the escort genes, indicating again that escort genes are required for this pathway. To confirm our results, we performed immuno-EM, and it showed that the gold-labeled KFERQ Part molecules are typically uh, localized in the, abundantly localized in the classical multivesicular body structures. And the pictures are uh, magnified here in these images. So overall now we can conclude that we have identified a selective uh, uh, KFERQ selective autophagy pathway which is prolonged starvation dependent so it is a uh, starvation-induced selective endosomal microautophagy pathway. So now we wanted to know whether uh, TAR uh, is involved in this pathway. TAR is a major kinase which is important for nutrient uh, sensing and growth regulation, and very importantly, it is a major inhibitor of macroautophagy. So in order to find out the role of TAR in this pathway, we uh, selected a a few components of the TAR pathway, upstream and downstream components of TAR pathway, um, showed in the arrows here. And to begin with, we started with rapamycin, which is a major chemical inhibitor of the TAR pathway. So we see that uh, our, the larvae kept in uh, for prolonged fit condition when we treated with rapamycin, it showed that Inhibition of TAR by rapamycin actually triggers the biosensor formation or the EMI pathway. So next, we also ch uh, checked with a TAR uh, activator rate and a TAR. Um, so we, in the first panel, we see that uh, we we made mosaic clones contain mosaic tissue containing homozygous mutant clones of the TAR activator rate. And in the lower panel, uh, we tested with an overexpression line of TSC1 and TSC2, which is TAR active, uh, sorry, inhibitor. And in both the cases, our results confirmed that inhibition of TAR actually triggers the EMI pathway in Drosophila larvae in vivo. Next, when we tested with TAR downstream components, ADG1 and ADG13, in the Upper panel, we tested, we made a mosaic tissue containing ATG13 homozygous mutant clones, and in the lower panel, we tested with a functional RNAi knockdown line of ATG1, and both the cases, our results showed that ATG1 and ATG13 are involved in this pathway. So finally, we can conclude that we have identified a prolonged starvation-dependent uh, autophagy pathway, which, is, uh, which requires a functional KFERQ motif and HSC74 as chaperones. It is distinct from the classical macroautophagy pathway. It is dependent on escort machinery. And last but not the least, it is regulated by TAR, and ATG1 and ATG13 complex probably playing a novel role here in this pathway. So we speculate that uh, Drosophila EMI might be an older form of selective autophagy that got bifurcated in mammalian system where the autophagy function uh, is shared between EMI, which is the constitutive form, and CMA, which is the starvation-induced form. So with this, um, I like to thank the first organizers for giving uh, me the opportunity to present here. And then um, we are extremely grateful to all the people and many of whom are already present here for providing us the reagents, fly lines, and antibodies, 
etc. And um, I thank Andreas Jenny, uh, my PI, and uh, Ana Maria Cuervo, uh, and her lab members, uh, Bindi Patel and uh, Hiroshi Koga, who are the co-authors of our paper, and uh, also the grants that provided support for this project from the beginning. And thank you all also. Thank you for that great talk. Um, in the sake of time, we need to skip questions until oh, okay. afterwards. Thanks.